Good morning again, everyone. This is Nick Petro with the National Weather Service in Raleigh with the weekly impact weather briefing for Central North Carolina covering today through Sunday through the rest of this week. The 9th of October uh, is how far out this uh, briefing covers. And uh, as we get into, uh, into this briefing, of course, uh, the main story that everyone is talking about, of course, is Hurricane Matthew. This is the 11 o'clock advisory number 22 update, and you can see the position and um, uh, maximum sustained winds 140 miles per hour. So uh, you know, we're still looking at the major hurricane status there. And the latest track, uh, not a whole lot of change since the previous uh, uh, <clears throat> advisory number 21. So uh, so anyway, that's the big story. I'll touch base on that more, what we may expect here in central North Carolina. But just a quick look here at the week's weather pattern. And uh, quite frankly, I think this week is just going to be outstanding weather-wise, at least through Thursday. High pressure uh, to the north is providing a cooler, uh, dry air mass. High pressure will remain extended across our area right through midweek. In fact, uh, northeast flow uh, can sometimes help promote fog, maybe some low clouds in the morning. So uh, that may be a concern uh, each morning uh, when you get up and head to the uh, you know, for the morning commute, especially if you live basically along the I-95 corridor and points eastward, those point, those places will have the best chance to see that fog each morning. But once that burns off, the rest of the day should be just absolutely nice. Uh, again, today, right through Thursday. And of course, uh, really, uh, Matthew and what happens with Hurricane Matthew is really the main weather player as we get into the late week and weekend period. Um, so uh, a lot of uncertainty, of course, with the track and how those bottom two panels showing the weather pattern will evolve as we head into that uh, period of the forecast. But, uh, but uh, anyway, here is, um, uh, I grabbed this image just a short time ago. So these are the latest track models that uh, everyone's familiar with, I'm sure. And the bottom line is, is that we're starting to see a little, little clustering, so uh, perhaps uh, the models are coming into better agreement. But how will Matthew affect Central North Carolina? There's two main bullets here. If it stays off the coast, then impacts across Central North Carolina will be limited to mainly rain and some wind. And when I say some wind, I mean breezy to maybe a little bit windy at times, nothing too substantial. Um, and most of that rain and wind would be east of the Triangle region, perhaps even east of I-95. But uh, if the track changes and it heads further west, or let's say makes landfall um, <clears throat> along the Carolina coast further west, well, so too will the more substantial impacts move west as well, such as the heavy rain, gusty winds, and isolated tornadoes. So uh, those would be potential hazards uh, uh, you know, for uh, central North Carolina should it take a further west track and perhaps you know, make, uh, move inland. So uh, anyway, uh, again, lots of uncertainty at this point. So folks, uh, we really need to stay tuned to this. Um, so, uh, so anyway, that's uh, the potential uh, situation for Central North Carolina, and again, this is mainly late in the week. We're talking, you know, Friday uh, through the weekend. So again, just coming coming back back to the the, the, the maps there, and you can kind of see high pressure giving us uh, nice weather today, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, you know, Hurricane Matthew and what happens to that being the situation for the late in the week and weekend until we get to Matthew, or until we get to late in the week, I should say. Um, like I said, just reiterating, nice weather. Uh, here's the severe thunderstorm potential. The uh, uh, outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center showing uh, basically uh, no thunderstorm activity right through the midweek period. Uh, rainfall, this is from the Weather Prediction Center, the rainfall amounts. Uh, you can see dry today, dry Tuesday, dry Wednesday. Thursday and Friday starts to suggest that rain sneaking up from the south associated with Matthew. Uh, Thursday should be dry, actually, but that's a two-day map, so um, that rain would be mostly on Friday. Um, should it pan out that way. You'll, are, are folks listening from, you know, maybe the triad westward, I think you're going to be in good shape, really. Um, you know, probably there's going to be a sharp cutoff on the western side uh, of, of that rain shield. So, you know, once you get west of the triad, should be, you know, uh, right through the weekend should be decent weather. Um, so, uh, so anyway, but, but, you know, if you're looking at the back edge of that rain shield east of the triad, um, that's obviously where we're going to have to pay closer attention. And, you know, again, depending on where that uh, track is, we'll, we'll ultimately determine uh, which locations, which parts of North Carolina 
uh, sees the heaviest rain. So again, stay tuned is the message. I will point out, it's important to point out, that the folks in the southern coastal plain, the sand hills in the Fayetteville area, need to pay special attention to this. Uh, everybody needs to pay attention, but you know, I will point out that if Matthew takes a more westerly track and brings heavy rain to this area here that I'm highlighting, uh, this upcoming uh, weekend, then flooding issues could quickly redevelop uh, given the recent heavy rains and flooding of last week. So people in these areas need to pay close attention to the forecast for later this week and be ready to respond to flooding concerns if needed. Now the map you see here on the right side, this is how much rain fell with the um, September 28th and 29th uh, you know, heavy rain event, you know, where there was, you know, eight to ten inches of rain that fell, you know, basically from eastern Hoke County to western and northern Cumberland County to southern Harnett County. Those areas received a, just a tremendous amount of rain in such a short period of time. And uh, folks in that area will remember the flooding, um, the, the, particularly the lower Little River was in, was actually reached a, a record uh, value for flooding and for its stage. The good news is that that river and the flooding has receded, the river has come back down, but those soils and those basins are particularly uh, saturated right now from that rain event. So uh, if you, you know, if Matthew were to take a more western track and come inland and bring additional heavy rain to this area, well then flooding in this area could be uh, could quickly redevelop and we could be right back to you know looking at some uh, flooding impacts and issues uh, in this area so uh, anyway just wanted to point that out um, any other tropical systems of concern besides Matthew the Hurricane Center um, is looking at this disturbance there um, north of the north northeast of the Caribbean there but given the proximity of Matthew right now that disturbance there um, uh, doesn't appear to be a concern for North Carolina um, so, uh, so that's the deal with that. Matthew is the main tropical cyclone uh, concern of interest here for, for us for uh, later this week and weekend. All right, so that pretty much summarizes uh, this week's weather. Uh, big weather story this week is Hurricane Matthew and how it may impact North Carolina later this week and the weekend. In the meantime, though, enjoy some very nice weather across central North Carolina uh, through at least Thursday. Uh, pleasant temperatures and, and lots of sunshine during the day. Good time to review your severe weather readiness and preparedness plans for your home, for your school, your office, uh, your business, whatever your situation is. Uh, review your severe weather uh, readiness and pre preparedness plans, you know, just in case Matthew decides, again, to take that more westerly uh, uh, track. If Matthew stays off the East Coast, then impacts... Uh, across central North Carolina will be limited to mainly rain and, a, and some wind, breezy to windy at times is what I mean by wind, and mostly east of the Triangle region. But if Matthew moves further west, so too will the more substantial impacts such as heavy rain, gusty winds, and isolated tornadoes. Uh, uh, again, just a reminder, due to last week's heavy rain and flooding, folks in the southern coastal plains, sand hills, and Fayetteville areas need to pay very close attention to the Matthew forecast. Um, lots of uncertainty at this point, obviously, so stay tuned. We're still, you know, a couple, five days away. Um, and uh, uh, I know folks are interested if we're going to be doing briefings and webinars, we will uh, as needed, uh, particularly later this week as, as we get a little closer. Um, we'll provide additional PowerPoint briefings and we'll host webinars uh, later this week as needed. Um, and all those briefings and webinar contact information times and that sort of thing, that will all be provided via our email list. So you'll want to uh, definitely uh, stay tuned to that email list and, and we'll be delivering more information uh, as needed, as appropriate. Uh, so um, there you have it. Um, again, some nice weather, good time to kind of review your severe weather plans and your storm kit and that sort of thing, um, you know, while the weather's nice these next few days, uh, just in case things uh, turn bad on us later in the week. So anyway, that's the uh, briefing for uh, Central North Carolina.